Oh, look at this beautiful water. It is nice and green. Gorgeous incoming tide bringing in that nice salty Gulf of Mexico water. Y'all, what is up everybody? I appreciate you for tuning in to another video. Today's episode, we're gonna head out and uh, you know, we don't know what we're gonna get into. We may go 50 miles, we may stick in 10 miles. It's supposed to be nice out in the Gulf compared to the other day when I went out. So I'm glad that y'all can join me. Let's get on some fish y'all. So sit back, relax, and let's get out there and enjoy the ride. Y'all, look at the dolphin. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. There are tons of dolphin. That is amazing. <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever right here. Wow, they are everywhere. How neat is that? Oh, it's right here in my way. Oh, that looks cool. So we made it exactly 50 miles offshore and I found this rip which is a very concentrated area of current. And I'm just trolling some Yozuri's back there, but it's so weird. It's like, it looks like mud. I mean, it looks like the Mississippi River mud. I thought it was jellyfish or blood minnows at first, but it's just red mud. But I'm gonna troll a little bit longer and then probably go and do some bottom fishing. See, that's red clay. That's the Mississippi River right there. Haha, <laughs> that is interesting. Wow. Hey y'all, so we actually came out now to 55 miles. This is the top of this reef. It's not really an artificial reef. This is just natural rocky bottom here on the edge of the uh, continental shelf area. So 313 feet of water to the top of the structure. And there's a bunch of small little marks and Swiss cheese bottom. It's a hard bottom. So we're gonna deep drop, I have a little hand tied rig this is a one pound bank sinker 16 ounces weird saying that but 80 pound yazuri fluorocarbon and five all owner circle hooks and i put a piece of squid on each one i've done three dropper loops now you can get fun with this you can add beads you can add lights but i just kept it simple throwing this on a daiwa saltiga 60 with 80 pound braid and a crowder six foot heavy power conventional rod because that is a lot of weight to reel up from that far deep. Let's go ahead and drop this sucker down and see what's hanging down and 55 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of current. That's why that one pound weight helps a lot. And even with this one pound weight, my line's still going a little bit to the back. And this is braided line too. So least resistance. Long way down y'all. Haven't reached the bottom yet. Okay, there's the bottom. I'm gonna reel it up till it's tight. And see what we get. This will be interesting. Now I almost have two pounds of lead on there just to mitigate the current. It's not being dragged nearly as quick behind me. Oh man, that was a good hit. Oh, come on. All right. We got our first fish hooked up on the squid from 312 feet deep. Feels like a good one too. This is gonna take a while to bring up. I'm excited to see what it is. The troll bite was fairly dead. I mean, if I had committed a little bit more, probably could have done something, but I really wanted to get out here and soak some squid. All right, I see some color. Nice, it's a keeper. We got our first keeper of the day. Get in here. I'll make sure that weight doesn't slam into my boat. <laughs> big old vermilion snapper look at that joker that's a good one ah oh, calm yourself that is called a beeliner vermilion snapper a mingo that's a good eating fish right there y'all really good eating here i'll throw him in the cooler looks like we still have bait on two of them i just got to put some more squid on this one and drop it back down let's get these squid back down if you want to work out try to reel in two pounds of weight 312 feet 
in addition to a fish with that strong current. That's a workout right there. There's the bottom. Last time I got a bite as soon as it hit the bottom. So, oh yeah, see, just like that. Instantly getting a bite. Must be a nice school of them down there. Come on, need a couple of you hooked up. All right, we have one hooked up. I'm gonna let it sit down there for a little bit, see if another one will come and eat the other bait. All right, we'll bring you up. <laughs> this is what it's about right here. Finally, the bite turned on. It's beautiful weather right here too, which is crazy because tomorrow's supposed to be ugly. All right, there's another one. That's a beeliner there, cool. That's another keeper. They only have to be 10 inches long. That's a nice one there. Beautiful fish. Nice cold water they're coming out of too. So let's throw them in the cooler. We have a perfect little squid right there. Put you on the bottom hook. And then the other two, I'm just using the tentacles. I hooked these one time. They're easy. That's a good looking bait there. Same thing here. And let's get it down. Get you right back down where you came from. Check bottom. There it is. Oh, wow. Something hit it pretty aggressively just now. All right. If that's a beeliner, that's a world record. <laughs> I don't think that's what that's going to be. Wow, that thing hit it so hard. Oh, my goodness. Put you in two speed. Uh, put you in low gear. Try to bring you up. Wow, that was insane. Just want to see what you are. This is where it gets tough. Because <laughs> it's fighting back down there. And I still have a lot of line out. Oh. Woo. This one will wear you down. <clears throat> I mean, we'll wear you down. I'm gonna use the gunnel here, just cause I like to. <laughs> there we go. Adapt and overcome. Get on up here, buddy. We'll find out what you are. There it is. That thing's big. Oh, wow. <sighs> big old American red snapper that's gonna have to go back. But dang, you put up a fight, buddy. <laughs> you put up a good fight. Look at you, dude. You're a big one. Oh, wow. I hate that we have to let you go. That's a big fish there. Y'all, that was a fight right there, I tell you that. What a big, beautiful fish this is. Huge mouth. We're gonna have to send it back down and come back and catch it when the season opens these things are gorgeous though american red snapper and the good thing this fish doesn't really present any signs of bear trauma other than that eye so we're gonna let it go and see it went straight back down what a healthy release there that's awesome Whew. okay i got a hook poked in me but that was an awesome awesome fight but that's why i like using this heavier leader like this is 80 pound fluorocarbon leader i tied these dropper loops with because you never know what you're going to hook and also you can put some serious pressure on these fish to get them up quickly humanely and also you know i don't want to say it yet but sharks and dolphins too get them keep them away from it but we're baited back up again dang that was a fight i'll tell you that i'll send it back down oh a nibble and a bite mm. <laughs> that's another good one <laughs> another really nice fish <sighs> doing the old captain morgan's thing <laughs> where you put your put your foot up prop the rod on the knee and just start reeling that's a good one there whatever this is gonna be it's got some nice weight to it Real nice weight. Okay, I see some color down there. Starting to see it. Oh, that might be an Almaco Jack. 
<laughs> something we can keep. Oh no, it just came off. Dang it. <laughs> that is an Almaco jack. <laughs> Darn. Oh man. Hey, I was doing that circle and just guess it wore a hole in his mouth. That was a nice Almaco. That would have been dinner as well. Dang it. Woo, that'll wear you down. Okay. Let's rebait and drop again. All right, I just had me a snack of Cheez-Its. It is gorgeous out here. I mean, slick. Oh, I think we're going to get some good fish here. Yep. And we have a fish. There we go. <laughs> uh, I moved about a quarter mile down the structure. It's a lot of natural bottom out here. Because these schools of fish move too. They don't just stay in one spot. So you may be on top of them for a little bit when you start slowing down, you know, move or change your bait just to give them something different. But I saw my fish finder started looking pretty bland and now it's lit back up again. And hopefully this is something here that can go in the cooler. Should be getting up here pretty soon. There he is. Oh man, and that's a yellow eye snapper. Cool. Those are unique. Y'all check out that yellow eye snapper. And y'all, this is a yellow eye snapper. I've actually never caught one before, so this is my first one. But see how it looks very similar to a red snapper, but it has obviously yellow eyes the yellow tips of their dorsal fin and a gorgeous tail. But this is gonna eat pretty good, so we're gonna spike him, cut the gill, and throw him on ice. Sweet. That will be a first time catch and cook on the channel, and uh, I've never eaten one before, so. Pretty cool, beautiful fish, I think. Awesome. See, that's why I say you never know what you're gonna catch out here. That was cool, because I've never caught one of those before. But they're very similar to Red Snapper. Just a little bit different color. I think it was gorgeous. So we're sending this back down. This is what you would call deep drop fishing. Starting from, you know, 280 feet all the way out to however deep you want to go. Typically to about 1,200 feet wherever there's structure. But deep dropping normally starts at around 280, 300 feet. I mean, it's deep water. Heavy weights, a lot of current, far boat rides or long boat rides, I should say. Oh. But there's a lot of good eating fish out here. And we just hooked up again. Soon as I push the drag forward, the lever forward, we are <laughs> hooked up. This is awesome, y'all. I don't even know what to say because this is exciting. Like, I didn't know what was in store for today. I knew I wanted to go far, take advantage of the calm seas. And man, this turned actually pretty fun. Oh, beeliner. Cool. We can add him to the box with the other ones. Heck yeah. They're all gorgeous fish when they come up. I mean, cool colors on them, bright red. But down there, that red color doesn't quite reach 300 feet. So down there, they're all gray. But that's another nice beeliner. Let's put him on ice and join the rest of his uh, buddies on a cold ride back to the Alabama coast. Now I want to show you on my screen. Check out all those marks. I've been running around all day today and finally started catching fish and this is what the screen looks like. A lot of times you don't really see that amount of fish. You know, you zoom in and look on the bottom and then you can really see the detail of, of the bottom and the holes they can hide in. But here, it's actually pretty lit up. Those are probably big snapper and amberjack. Could be sharks. You really never know. But I baited up again. And this is a simple setup. I mean, I tied this last night at home. 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. 5 volt circle hooks. Just make little dropper loops. This is pretty much 2 pounds of lead right here. Make sure we're tangle free and sending it back down. And braid is a must for this type of fishing. Purely for the fact of how thin it is, there's very little resistance in this strong current. And you can also feel everything that's going on to your bait down below. 
you use mono there's a lot of stretch and you're going to just miss a whole lot of things and have to use too heavy of a weight for this deep type of fishing oh another bite and i think we have it yeah we do sweet we'll bring it up might be another bee liner kind of acting like one they're very jittery fish <laughs> considering their size oh there it is yes nice bee liner there we go <laughs> got you bud now you're allowed to keep 10 of these a person they can stack up in the hundreds down there i mean and they're one of the finest eating fish on the reef aside from grouper and stuff but this one you can catch year round and keep them year round see and that's why i like using squid because it's durable stays on the hook it has a great smell even in black water you know down there there's really no light and then also the action in current it just looks alive look at that i'm not even doing anything i'm just holding the line and it looks like it's swimming and alive even though it's frozen so we're gonna put some fresh pieces on there and send her back down again and since it's just me all i did was tie a three hook rig a lot of times you can do five or six throw some glow beads on there a light but but simple is normally better in this scenario it's less for me to less to get tangled and bring in the boat but y'all we definitely have some nice fish for catch clean and cook for our dinner or lunch tomorrow everything from here on is just an added bonus <laughs> a fun added bonus <laughs> chop the squid down a few more times and see what else we pull up and then it'll be a nice boat ride back in okay on the bottom oh that didn't take long at all i'm gonna let it sit there a little bit and see if another one wants to eat the other hook oh yeah feels like we might have two on there or just something a little heavier all right oh stud bee liner nice one that's a good one there so i can stay and keep on catching them but i got a long ride back and hopefully we can still get back to the pass before sunset but that is a great bee liner to finish out this fishing trip now oh that's cool all these minnows are seeking asylum on the side of the boat that's neat but what i'm gonna do since we have five bee liners and that yellow eye i absolutely love icing my cooler down with salt water and that bee liner's been spiked that's just residual movement from them half salt water half ice and keep them in there overnight and you'll be surprised at how well the flesh stays firm makes them easy to clean as well this should be a nice smooth ride back just want to show you all this 360 degrees of serenity that's what i call it peacefulness awesomeness but you still have to respect it have proper safety gear make sure your maintenance is up to date let somebody know where you're going and even after that be prepared to call for help if you have to in the worst case scenario it's not something to mess around with coming out this far but i just want to say that it's doable but just i don't you know suggest to just anybody <laughs> just have to put that out there but we're gonna make our way back to the boat ramp let me secure the deck and let's get going yo we have seven more miles but y'all have to check out that sunset golly it's gorgeous we just made it home and i want to show you something that bird of prey made for me that you'll probably be interested in this is a tailgate cleaning table and i mean it's almost like they knew what the size of the tailgate was on this uh truck this is standard chevrolet silverado but this is what bird of prey made for me we're going to clean our yellow eye snapper otherwise known as a silk snapper i'm going to give the bee liners away to a friend slash neighbor so they have some fresh fish but i think this clean table is really cool it's been sitting outside it's kind of dirty but it's perfect for if you go to the beach or if you just don't have a great place to clean fish there's no better way than how i did it when i was 16 years old cleaning crappie and bluegill on the back of a truck and they have these little rubber stops right here that prevent it from sliding around <laughs> just 
like that and uh, it's actually engraved with my logo in there as well so you can get you one of these if you want they'll be linked down below use promo code bama 10 save you 10 percent off that is awesome so i appreciate bird to pray for that and all my fillet knives are right there when i need them today we're going to use a seven inch medium flex let's get our fish out that's a gorgeous fish i mean really pretty like i said if you cover that up it looks like a red snapper but there's no size limits on them. There's just that reef aggregate limit. You can look that up. It's normally 20 reef fish combined. Take our seven inch flex fillet and we're gonna get our two fillets off there. And then I'm probably gonna get that collar out of there too and take it inside. These are really easy to clean, especially with a good sharp knife. Something like this, I like to do hole as well. If you like, those bee liners are great for doing hole. Just go back along that dorsal all the way to their tail. Don't be afraid to clean your knife off. It's hard to cut through scales. And then fillet it right along that bone. And look how pretty that meat is, especially after we bled it out. You know, you slice the gills and that is a pretty cut of meat. So let's continue on filleting it. I kind of pull back with my thumb. Like I said, these are easy fish to fillet compared to like a sheep's head or a big bull red. Get that belly meat. Don't forget that bottom part. And now we can remove the skin. If you wanna leave the skin on, you can. You can scale it before you fillet it, but I like to remove it in this scenario. And now let's lay our knife flat against our cutting board. Take it right off in a clean, gorgeous piece of yellow-eyed snapper, otherwise known as a silk snapper. There are some pin bones in there you want to get out. You can feel them. Whenever you clean fish, you can feel these pin bones. Just cut these out. Leave your belly meat there. You don't want to cut that out. And now we have a boneless, skinless fillet. So let's get this other side knocked out cut that or off so it's not flopping around i think their skin is gorgeous look at that pretty fish let's get this side of the fillet see how bleeding it out there's really not a big mess here some fish i don't but when i go offshore i'll make a nice incision right there with some shears and cut these gills and throat and uh, you can spike them as well and you'll have a clean fillet like this. Let's do this side. Once you get through those scales, just run that knife all the way up along that back. Boom, really easy. And then you can hear that knife run along those bones. You want some flex in your fillet knife. Whatever you use, you want a little bit of flex when cleaning these fish. Because you can hear me run along those bones, but I'm not cutting through to the other side. See? Now let's go around that rib cage. Straight down. That is just a gorgeous piece of meat. I have to take a second and acknowledge how pretty that is. Can't wait to eat it. Our own natural God-given grocery store. Hey. Now it's time to skin it. Leave a little bit of attach so you have something to hold on to. Put that knife parallel to your cleaning table and smoothly go through. Now you have another nice skinless fillet and about to be boneless once we remove those pin bones. Those you can choke on pretty easy because they're small. So small incision, cut those out till you don't feel anymore. Trim up some of that skin and there's our boneless skinless gorgeous <laughs> yellow eyed snapper fillets that we're gonna take up and cook it actually yielded a pretty good amount of meat i want to get this collar out of here otherwise known as her throat so i am going to take a serrated knife and i want to get most of these scales off so that's what we're going to do is try to scale it best we can because some of your sweetest meat 
on a fish will be right up here in the head on a little bit larger fish this one really doesn't have much head meat but that piece right behind this pectoral fin right there is the sweetest bite you'll ever take so let's get these scales off best we can so we got most of those off and i like to serrate a knife because they can be hard to cut through so get through that bone okay same thing on this side get through that collarbone carefully all right and then most of the time you kind of just pull it out and there's our collar now we're going to clean this up we don't want those gills on there we'll get those gills off we'll pat that dry and get those fish juices off of there if you know what i mean and that's another delicious cut that's underrated by most people is that fish throat or collar so let's take these upstairs and we'll see you in the kitchen y'all so we're in the kitchen it's the next day and it's time to cook up our lunch have some nice oil heating up in both these pans here is our fresh yellow eye snapper and the collar and this is going to be a pretty simple dish we're going to shallow fry it serve it on a bed of rice with some fried onions and yogurt on the side a good nice healthy contrast so i have an egg wash a little mediterranean spice mix i made with some cumin powder coriander powder paprika chili powder salt pepper and garlic powder <laughs> and then white lily flour and our oil heating up in the cast iron i have sliced these two fillets into manageable friable pieces and then our rice is steaming in the cooker we're gonna let these come up to 375 and get ready to cook so as our oil's heating up we're gonna season our batter and we'll get this nice and thoroughly mixed up in there what i like to do is take our egg wash get that nice fillet covered up my daughters are in the background going crazy and then dip it in the batter. We're gonna do the same thing with these. And our oil has come to temp, should sizzle up nicely. There you go, that's what you want. So we're gonna do all these fillets, should be able to cook up in one mix. One nice batch. Fresh snapper from 50 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico. This is gonna be good, y'all. And we may, need to make room for one more. And this was just one egg. One egg does this fish great. And if you have your own way of seasoning things, like if you like a mustard binder, or if you like to use Chef Paul's or Tony's, or any of those Cajun seasonings is good. But I like this little Mediterranean flair I made, just combining those seasonings. And that's gonna fry up. Let me wash my hands, and we're gonna get our onions in real quick. Y'all, so here comes some fresh curry leaves that will probably pop. Yep. Curry leaves like the pop. And then we're going to put our onions in there. And this is just going to be some nice sauteed fried onions on the side. They'll, those will cook down nicely. Got a few more curry leaves in there. These are fresh curry leaves too. Woo, look how nice and crispy that is. Perfect. Turn down the heat just a hair. Man, that's why I love putting some paprika because you get that golden crispy color. That one take, can take a little bit longer. Fresh yellow eye snapper there. Our curry leaves and onions there. That's gonna be a good dish. All we'll have left after those are finished is doing this collar. And that's actually the most prized part right there. So the first smaller pieces we put in, those are done. Have you a paper towel on a plate so they can drain. Oh yeah. Man, those look delicious. Look how golden and crispy they are. Those are gonna be good once they cool down. I'm excited about that. Our onions are almost finished. Let's go ahead and put the collar in. We're gonna do the same thing with the collar. Get a nice egg wash on there so your batter sticks. And like I said, this is just one plain egg. I've added nothing to it. There's our rice being finished. Perfect timing. Didn't even plan that out. <laughs> we want that snapper throat fried up nicely. Let's add it in. I'm gonna add it in meat side down. 
Let that sucker fry up. That shouldn't take long. A couple minutes on each side. Let me wash my hands and stir our onions. All right, wash our hands. And it's time to get our onions stirred up. They're still frying. I like them pretty crispy and brown. This <laughs> smell good. Time to flip. Woo, perfect. Got it nice and crispy. And then we want those fins crispy. It's just gonna be like one more minute and then we're done with it. Y'all, so we have everything done. I just wanna try one of these fried curry leaves real quick because the smell is killing me. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. This is our lunch and I love the flavor of these. Mmm, crispy, delicious flavor. Okay, let's go ahead and start plating. We're gonna get some rice on here. Whoa, whoa, that rice is fresh and hot. A nice, crispy piece of fish. A little bit of cilantro on there. Take some of our onions, just as a little flavor on the side. Then our bowl of plain yogurt. And there is a delicious looking plate of food. I just love plain yogurt like just not flavored it's not vanilla or anything it's just plain and those fried onions we're gonna go ahead and give it a try y'all cannot wait to eat this and then i want to dig into my favorite part which is going to be the collar or the throat but there's a nice bite a fresh yellow eye snapper otherwise known as a silk snapper let's give it a try You cannot go wrong with any of that. You got the sweetness of the onions, the crispiness and delectable flesh of that filet, and then the yogurt just to round it all out, and then some rice. God, that is delicious. Give a bite of just the fish by itself. I wanna show you how flaky. See that? Look how flaky and white this is. Mmm. That's amazing. The usually thrown away part or discarded part. I'm gonna give that nice crispy fish fin a try. If you know, you know. I love eating bluegill tails like that, but you can do it with anything. <laughs> it's like a nice fresh fish potato chip. Mm. If you know, you know. Look at all that meat in that throat. That would typically be thrown away. See that? It'll be thrown overboard with the rest of the carcass. There's a lot of nice white meat in the flesh in that collar. And it'll be the sweetest and best bite, aside from head and cheek meat on a bigger fish, but that will be the sweetest bite you'll ever take out of the entire fish. And this is like comparing, you know, something really good to something just out of this world. You know, it's all delicious. Y'all appreciate the good Lord of putting this fish there and providing the opportunity for me to go out and catch it and cook it. I know you ask for a lot of catch and cooks and you enjoy them. So if you do, go smash that subscribe button if you want to see more. All of our partners are linked down below. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Drop a like, drop a comment. And as always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.